Good morning, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. This morning we're looking at the uh, parasite resistant hair sheep flock that we've developed. And basically uh, we're using them as a cleanup crew here on some civil pasture and a new farm we just leased. Uh, this has civil pasture clearings around the edge of it, back to by the trees, and then we have some pasture, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's opened up out here. And uh, this is a newly leased farm, it's two years old. And uh, the sheep are going around just kind of grazing the, what they want here as far as weeds. And, you know, we have a lot of brambles on this farm. Um, the cattle, the cattle don't eat some of that. And the sheep will. Um, see that young dog? Boy, he really patrols these sheep. He kind of keeps them, keeps them together. And something gets too far away. It seems like he kind of likes getting them back together where they can watch them. Never been sheep on this farm ever, and so uh, I'm sure there's coyotes lurking around here, and I noticed we turned them in here, the guard dogs went right around the perimeter of this paddock, and uh, were sniffing and barking and different things, so they're just letting everything know. That I saw one big dog pee on the corner down here, so he's kind of laying out his perimeter, but there's goldenrod in here, there's blackberry, um, if you look down close here, there's some, there's buck brush. Okay, dewberry vines. There's a lot of viney stuff in here, and it makes it really hard to walk because it catches your feet. Of course, we have some sumac. You can see the uh, the sumac in there, little, little pretty leaves there. The sheep will eat that. And the autumn olive, uh, they're going to nail this stuff. The little bigger autumn olive trees there. Everything they can reach, they'll eat every single bit of it. There's, a, there's one vine in here. I'm not sure what it is. It's a real low low hanging vine it doesn't have thorns on it but you can't walk through it it catches your feet and these sheep that's one of the first that's what those they're going after right there's that low hanging vine that one there's eating some goldenrod the one with the horns there um they're just so non-selective anything with a broad leaf they're just going to get it um they will eat grass but they far prefer to eat something that looks more like a weed and so you know you can run these guys in with your sheep I'm sorry in with your cattle uh, we actually had cows in here about 20 days ago so the sheep are kind of getting the leftovers here but you know the cattle they don't they don't go after a lot of these weedy things but the sheep where you can see one over there uh, he's he's reaching up in that autumn olive tree right there getting leaves and there'll be a graze line through this whole patty. Every leaf that hangs out they can get it like I know they can. So they are extremely aggressive grazers on stuff that we wouldn't consider food. Um, this would have been a paddock that I'd have went in and brush hogged earlier, you know, and knocked it down and everything, but if I'm gonna do that, I'm mowing down some pretty good sheep feed, so I'd rather grow lambs and not use fossil fuel and, uh, you know, be just a lot more regenerative uh, using the manure from these sheep. We just moved them out of a civil pasture. They'd been on for two days. They absolutely stripped it. They took every leaf off of every sprout. And the high points on that paddock, they were only in there two days. But the high points were just completely littered with uh, a, a huge accumulation of manure. So... You know, you need to move these sheep, but this farm's never had sheep on it. And I'm telling you, these sheep are just thriving. Part of it is there's no parasites out here. Okay, so opening up all this silver pasture that we're talking about, you know, we got 900 acres of timber, and if we can get half of that incorporated by just thinning it and bringing the sheep in to control the sprouting, oh, that's going to be good for them. I, I just think their, their health has been better, getting them on more of the tree and the sprout leaves they they just look good we're going into winter here and all these sheep are fat they just they really look good there's some withers in here that'll be finished as you know grass-fed lamb and then of course there's a bunch of pregnant ewes in here that'll be lambing on pasture in may first of may so you know if you're going to have sheep folks and you're in a cold climate control your rams don't run your rams year round with your sheep Got to get them away from your ewes, otherwise you're going to have a wreck because 
you land in January in Missouri when it's 20 below zero, you're going to have about a 20% lamb crop. The rest of them are going to freeze to death, so don't do that. But these sheep are really active. Uh, that's what I found about sheep is they move a lot. They graze more like a deer. They're more of a browser than they are a grazer. And, you know, you can see them right there. Some of them are eating a little bit of the fescue, but a lot of them are going after that. There's one eating that vine, that horned one right there. That's a wither behind that ewe, right, that, look at that one, he's eating, that's a multifer rosebush, they eat some of the nastiest stuff, they just, they, they, they enjoy it, you know, it's part of their diet, it's just crazy, but it's, it's one of the advantages we have with ruminants, folks, there's nothing else that you can put on this worn out land, this farm hasn't had livestock on it for 70 years. And I looked at it for 30 before I ever leased it and got an opportunity to lease it because it fastened onto our farm. And it only had about 10 acres of grass on it, but now we've, with our thinning and taking the cedars out, we've got about 30 acres here now. And look at the sheep. I'm excited about these things. We can increase our numbers now on the sheep, especially because we're going to be expanding their range. And as they graze, they're going to make the cattle grazing better. How are we keeping them in with that one wire? Look at that. There's one pot. Well, you can't see it from here, but there's one wire. There's 12 inches. That's keeping them sheep in. It's because they're not hungry. Don't let your sheep get hungry. Start out with three poly wires go down to two and now we're down to one and actually it's poly braid not poly wire these sheep really really respect that wire it's hot it's got 7,000 volts in it and you know they don't need to get out so they don't they're moved if you go one extra day and get lazy and don't move them and they run out of feed then you're gonna say well you know what that one wire stuff doesn't work you're right it doesn't because they got hungry these sheep are staying in well. This is Greg Judy signing off. Everyone have a great fall day, and uh, we're happy to be grazing.